God that reigns in majesty, no one like our God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. We bless and we worship his name. No one is like our God. I want to welcome you specially today to today's uh, broad, um, um, Power in the Word service. I was almost saying broadcast because I've been doing broadcast every morning. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord is good and all the time. Amen. Um, we started last Thursday on the subject of faith. And I'm going to continue on this subject for a while. Glory be to God. Because we cannot um, conclude on the subject of faith. Faith is what we need to live. The Bible makes us to understand that the just shall live by his faith. So I want us to pray as we go into the world this, this night. Heavenly Father, we thank you. King of glory, we bless you. Immortal, invincible God, we, we bless your name. Thank you, Father, for another time in your word. Thank you, Lord, because the entrance of your word opens us up to the miraculous and to the limitless uh, blessings that comes from God. We ask tonight that you will open our eyes of understanding. We ask tonight that you will speak to us. We ask tonight that no life will remain the same. Do eternal works in our lives and your name be praised forever. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Right. Now, let's begin today by going to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2. We have seen the importance of faith last Thursday. We have seen that there is a way that the enemy wants you to react or to respond to situations. And also, there is a way that God wants you to react or respond to situations. The enemy wants you to respond in a particular way, and God wants you to respond in a particular way. Glory be to God in the highest. And God wants you to respond in a faith way, while the enemy wants you to respond by fear and doubt and unbelief. Glory be to God. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's go there. Let's start from there. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Please always endeavor to have something to write. You cannot memorize everything. Amen. You are not a computer to record everything. But when you memorize, you can go back to your notes and then you can re look at your notes and then study your notes and then you know how to move on from there. Always come with your writing materials. That is very important whenever you are in church. Don't just sit down and look. Come with your writing materials. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's read together. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. One to go. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Now, let's read it again loudly. Everybody want to go? Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. I want you to say with me, the just shall live by his faith. Say the just shall live by his faith. Now, if you are the just here, the just means the righteous, those who have come to God through Jesus Christ. Say with me, I will live by my faith. Say it again, I will live by my faith. Now, let's read uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Romans chapter 1. And verse 17, let's read together. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Are we there? Let's read together. One to go. Romans 1, 17. 
Romans 1, 17, want to go, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by what? The just shall live by what? Now, go to Galatians 3, verse 11. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11. And I want us to read together, everybody. One, two, go. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by what? The just shall live by what? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Let's read together. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Let's read one to go. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Now, one thing you will find out from these four passages of scriptures is that these four passages of scriptures are talking about the same thing. They are saying that the just shall live by faith. Now, go to that Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 again and let's read from a few other translations. Glory be to God. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's read from the New Living Translation. New Living Translation. It says, look at the proud, they trust in themselves, and their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. Now, they will live by their faithfulness to God. They will live by faith. Now, Romans 1.17, let's read a few verses from that. Romans 1, 17, Romans 1, verse 17, Romans 1 and verse 17, hallelujah. New Living Translation, he said, this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is true faith that a righteous person has life. It is true what? It is true what? It is true what? Faith. Glory be to God. Now, so when you look at these passages and we read other translations, it therefore tells a believer that you don't have any other life apart from faith life. That is, as a believer, you must understand how faith works. Because that is the way to live. Glory be to God. That is the way to what? To live. You must understand how faith works. And that is why the teaching of faith is so crucial to believers. Because many believers do not know how faith works. And if the Bible says in four places, four different places... That the only way to live, the only way to live as a believer is by faith. It therefore means that faith is crucial to the life of a believer. You cannot do without faith. You cannot. You cannot do without faith. And the earlier you understand that, the better. You cannot do without faith because faith is crucial to the life of a believer. Glory be to God in the eyes. Now, in Mark chapter 11, in Mark chapter 11, there was an incident there when Jesus spoke to a fig tree. I'm sure you all know the story when Jesus spoke to this fig tree and the fig tree died. And then after the fig tree died, you know, the Bible says that um, they asked him, Master, the tree which you cursed yesterday is dead. That is in Mark 11 from verse 12. That was when he caused the tree to verse 14. And then when they said to him, Lord, the tree which you caused yesterday. Let's go to verse 20. 
Mark 11 from verse 20. Let's read together. Mark 11 from verse 20. Mark chapter 11 from verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Verse 21. Read with me. Verse 21. One to go. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. Verse 22, everybody want to go. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Now, for those of us that are Bible students, we know the story. Jesus was passing by and he saw a fig tree that had leaves. And he thought that when he got there, there would be fruits there. And the Bible says that when he got there, there were no fruits on it. Glory be to God. And when there were no fruits on it, Jesus did something to the fig tree. Now, go back to verse 12. I want to show you something that Jesus did. Mark 11 from verse 12. Mark 11 from verse 12. Glory be to God. Mark 11 from verse 12. One to go. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Amen. Verse 13. Now, I need to stop there. Jesus was hungry. Amen. As man, he was hungry. Are you getting me right now? Glory be to God. Amen. Now, verse 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if aptly he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. Verse 14. Now, read verse 14 and read it carefully. One, two, go. And Jesus, wait, wait, wait. And Jesus, and Jesus, and Jesus. Now, you don't answer if there was no conversation. Is that right? If I answer anointed, that means it demanded something from me. Then I answer. Amen? So, it means that before he got there, there was a conversation going on. Hallelujah. And I'm going to show you that very soon. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples did what? And his disciples did what? So, Jesus responded to something by speaking words. Let somebody say words. Let somebody say words. Now, this is very important. And he did not just speak words. He spoke words that could be hard. He spoke words that could be what? He spoke words that could be hard. Because the Bible said his disciples had him. That was why by the following day, when they were passing by and the fig tree had died, the Bible said, the disciples said to him, Sir, the fig tree that you cursed yesterday is dead. Why? Because they had him when he said it. Now, that is very important. Very, very important. So when they now asked him, they said, the tree is dead. Because they had him when he said, then he said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. So, Jesus was telling them that what I did yesterday was faith in action. Are you getting me right now? I just released my faith. I just demonstrated my faith. And in demonstrating my faith... Over that issue of the fig tree, in demonstrating my faith, you saw how I spoke. You heard how I spoke. You heard it. Glory be to God. How I responded to the fig tree. And how I spoke and what happened. In other words, have this at the back of your mind as we go on on this series that there can't be faith. Without words. Have that at the back of your mind. And that is why what you say matters a lot. It does what? It matters a lot. What you say does, does what? 
matters a lot. You know, we was talking last Thursday that there is always a way the devil wants you to respond to situations. And one of the ways Satan wants you to respond is that when situations happen, Satan wants you to say certain things. Amen. He wants you to say how difficult the thing is. How it will not work out. It seems as if what you say is important in the, in the, uh, the release of your faith. What you say is so important in the release of your faith such that the enemy is so careful to make you to try to say certain things. I want you to say to yourself, I won't say what the enemy wants me to say. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, have faith in God. That is what I have just done is a demonstration of faith. Now, what does that mean? What does it imply? It implies that for anything to happen in your life that will be miraculous, it will require faith. Anything that will be what? Miraculous. You will need to have faith in God. Say with me, have faith in God. Say it again, say have faith in God. Say, I will have to have faith in God. So what does that mean? It means for me to believe God to move me from this level to this level, I will need to demonstrate my faith in God. Are you getting it right now? For me to experience a change, a miracle, a miraculous turnaround in my life, it will require what? My faith. It will require my faith. So if my business will move from here to this level, that is, if I will want a miracle in my business, I will need to have faith. Amen? If I would need a miracle in my life, a healing in my body, if I would need a prosperity in my life, if I would need God to turn my situation around, if I would need God to turn my finances around, what will it require? It will require faith. I will need to have faith in God. It will require faith. So God will not just do things until people act in faith. Are you getting me right now? I remember some years ago somebody told me and, you know, she said, God, you know, I don't know why you are doing this to me. You know, if I'm God and you are in my situation, you know I will do it for you. You know me. How many of you have thought like that? Anybody you've thought like that? You know God, if I'm in your situation, you know me, I will do it for you. So why are you not doing it for me? Why are you doing me like this? <laughs> so we can therefore say the degree of the manifestation of God that you see is dependent on how much of your faith you can release. That is why he said, have faith in God. And in four places, the Bible says, the just shall do what? They shall live by faith. So, if I want to see more of God in my life, what do I need to do? I need to begin to walk by faith the more. Or else, situation will not change. Things will remain the same. Are you getting it right now? So, if there is a venture that a Christian should, you know, uh, immerse himself into, 
it is in the acquiring of faith. Are you getting me? It is in what? The acquiring of faith that your faith might continue to grow. Because the degree to which faith is released from you determines the degree to which you see the miraculous. How do I get healed? I get healed by faith. Amen? How do I get my needs met? By faith. I go everywhere and God takes me there and bring me safely. By what? By faith. Hallelujah. By faith. All the little projects that you see us doing in this church, how do you think they are happening? By faith. As of two weeks ago, there was no enough money to start the project we are doing. The money was not there. But by Monday, praise God, by faith it came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please put this at the back of your mind that when it comes to the exercise of your faith, what you say matters. Oh. What you do what? What you say matters. Now, do not forget there is an enemy that wants you to say certain things. Don't just say it. So have faith in God. The just shall live by faith. Now listen to me. It does not matter the level you are in life right now. You may be at the lowest level in life. When I mean lowest, I mean the real lowest level in life. Things might look so difficult, so bleak, as if you can never triumph. But do you know that if you can begin to release your faith and grow in faith, we can be so sure that the miraculous will begin to take effect in your life and your life will not remain at the level that it was right now, that it is right now. Why? Because when you start releasing faith, you begin to see God at work. When you start releasing faith, what do you do? What do you see? You see God at work. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. So you will have to have faith. Now I'm taking time, you know, to uh, to establish this principle. To, uh, to establish this uh, principle of faith, you will have to have faith in God. So then the next thing is, if you will need to have faith, you have to know what is faith, because that is where it begins. If faith is so crucial. We saw last Thursday that Jesus told Peter and said, look, Satan has desired to have you, to sift you as wheat, but don't worry, I have prayed for you. But my prayer is not to stop the devil. My prayer is that your faith should not fail. Because once your faith is not failing, the devil you will, is not a problem for you. Amen. So the prayer of Jesus was not to stop the devil, but to make sure that the faith of Peter was strong and the faith was not, you know, um, was not shaken. And that is the reason why you need to be in an atmosphere of faith to grow your faith. Because one thing the devil wants to fight in you is to take away your faith like he wanted to do to Peter. It will bring people, circumstances, situations to make sure that you lose faith. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. We're talking about faith. Hallelujah. Is somebody still here? 
If you are still here, shout hallelujah. Now he said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Now when we talk of the elders, it talks of the patriarchs. How did they get all the testimonies they got? By what? By faith. So the testimonies of David, Samson, uh, you know, uh, and all the giants we read of in the Bible, Abraham and all of that, how did they get the testimony? They got those testimonies by what? By faith. Now, but let's go to verse 1 again. So we have... version. Hebrews 11.1 1, Amplify. Hebrews 11.1 1, Amplify. Glory be to God. So we want to see a definition. And when we do the definition, we close today and we continue next week. Are you getting blessed at all? So you have seen the importance of faith. And you have seen that if you must live as a Christian, it is by faith. So if you don't understand how faith works, you will be a Christian, but your life will not be different from the life of someone who is not a Christian. And we have seen that one thing you must be careful of when walking by faith is what you say. Why? Because the devil wants you to say certain things. We're going to find all this out as we go on. Now, let's read. Now, faith is the, is the, is the, is the, let somebody say assurance. Say it again, say assurance. So what is faith? Faith is the assurance. The Bible did not say faith is a assurance. Faith is the assurance. Now, I'm sure we all did mathematics in school. There is this mathematics, I don't know the name they call it. You know that they will say if A equals to B and B equals to C. You know, they do it with triangles. If angle A is equal to angle B and angle B equals to angle C, what does that mean? Angle A is equal to angle C. It is what? Which mathematics is that? Eh? Opposite and adjacent angle. Is it? Quadratic equation? Simultaneous equation, trigonometry ratio, clap for them, they, they went to school. I left secondary school in 1987. <laughs> Apart from our mommy here, and maybe a few, one or two, many of you are not yet born in 1987. If you, have been, if you are not yet born in 1987, wave your hands. 1987. Nifemi, have you been born in 1987? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So forgive me if I forget trigonometry ratio. And most of I didn't like mathematics in school. I just don't like mathematics. It was too difficult. Though I had a distinction in it. In, my, in Waek, I had a distinction. But I didn't like it because you are dealing with what you can't see. I don't like what I can't see. I always like what I can see. So I like biology because you can see all the tadpole, the toad, everything like that. You know, I like a Greek because you see the way the thing is growing. But chemistry and mass, they will put one chemical, it will change color. They will now say something has happened inside it. One atom has broken into two and I can't see the atom. <laughs> so those two subjects, I didn't like them. Praise the Lord. So, if the Bible says faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Now, one word I want us to take from here is the word assurance. Let somebody say assurance. Let somebody say assurance. 
So the Bible says faith is the assurance. Not a assurance. The assurance. So what it means is when you are reading the Bible, especially in the New Testament, and you see the word faith, you can replace the word faith and put the word assurance there. Why? Because faith is the assurance. Do you get my logic now? That's why we did that little mathematics. Amen? Praise God. Bro, victory is even here. He's a teacher, so he will know more the mathematics. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So faith is what? The assurance. So wherever you see the word faith, you can put assurance there. Now, what is assurance? Is a confirmation. Is that right? A confirmation within you. Amen. Now, go with me to Romans chapter 4. Romans and chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Glory be to God. I want us to read from verse 17. Romans chapter 4 from verse 17. And one thing we are going to read there is that anywhere you see the word faith, instead of putting faith, we will put what? Assurance. Amen. We will put what? Assurance. Now let's look at the faith or the assurance of Abraham. Amen. One to go. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Verse 18. Read verse 18. One to go. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. Now read verse 18 again, one to go. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19, one to go. And be not weak in, in, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, one to go. Verse 20, he staggered not, at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in assurance, giving glory to God. Now, this was talking about the faith of Abraham, how he became the father of many nations. And the Bible says something about him here, that he was not weak in faith, or he was not weak in assurance. Is that right? But he was strong in faith, he was strong in assurance. Now, so he had assurance that he will be the father of many nations. And the Bible says that assurance was not weak. That assurance was what? Was strong assurance. Now, the question, therefore, we will ask is, where did he get this assurance from? How did he get the assurance that he will be the father of many nations? Let's go to verse 18 again. And let's read. Verse 18. One to go. Verse 18. Romans 4, 18. How did he get the assurance? One to go. Who against hope, uh-huh, believed in hope. You know, his situation was hopeless. Then he believed, uh-huh, that he might be the father of many nations, uh-huh. How? According to to that which was spoken, uh -huh, so shall thy seed be. So where did he get his assurance from? There was something that was spoken to him. What was spoken to him? The word of God. God spoke a word to him. And what did God say to him? This is how your seed will be. Are you getting me right now? 
So if faith is assurance, where does the assurance come from? The assurance comes from that which was spoken by God. Are you getting it right now? The assurance comes from where? From that which was spoken by God. So the assurance of a believer comes from what? What God said. Therefore, we can say faith comes from what? From what God said. So if you are not hearing what was spoken, you will not have faith. Assurance will not come. Glory be to God. Now let me look at a, um, use an example of something we can easily relate to. If you are a mechanic, you will notice that if now Minister Emmanuel is not a mechanic, if your car just give one sound, bam, you will quickly call your mechanic, is that right? Because you don't want the car to break down. But you know if you are a mechanic, you can say, ah, don't worry. It can still get to Shokoto, don't worry. When you go to Shokoto and come back, come and fix it. What gave that mechanic that assurance? He has received a knowledge about how the car works. For him to know that even when you hear that sound, you can still go to Shokoto, then when you come back, we will fix it. But you that don't have that knowledge, what happens to you? The moment you hear that sound, fear will come. You don't want the car to break down. Are you here with me? The same way it is with spiritual things. When you receive knowledge of the word of God to a point, there is a realm of reality that you enter into. Are you getting me right now? That even if naira to dollar becomes whatever, you will still say, don't worry, don't worry, no problem, all is well. Even when everybody's BP is going up, you will still be smiling. Why? Because something, you have received that which is spoken from God. So assurance has come to you. Are you getting me right now? Assurance has come to you that in the midst of famine, the young lions may lack and suffer hunger, but they that put their trust in God shall not lack any good thing. Even when you get home and it's like there is nothing, are you still here? You have this assurance based on what God has said that you are not moved. Are you getting it right now? Do I need to go over that example again? Praise God. Anointed plays keyboard. He's not a mechanic. So if you are driving and you hear, bam, you quickly park. But if you are a mechanic, or you call your mechanic and he says, ah, is this sunny? Is this sunny? You, he can tell you, don't worry. You are going to a Go When you come back, we'll fix it. The car will go. How did he have that confidence? Because he already has an information, a knowledge about how cars work. To know that when you hear that sound, the car can still go to Shokoto and come back. Nothing will happen. Right? The same way it is when you hear the word, like Abraham, the Bible says, according to that which was spoken, he heard what God said. To the point that confidence built up inside him, assurance built up inside him, that even when his body was dead, he knew it's a matter of time, we still have a child. Glory be to God. Now that's why when you look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, I want to read uh, Hebrews 10 verse 38. Hebrews 10, 38. Hallelujah. Another way faith is described in scriptures. Hebrews 10, 38. We read it just now. 
Amen. He says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now, let's go to verse uh, 35. Hebrews 10, 35. Now, I've read 38, 39 for you to know this is talking about faith. Let's look at the way he described faith. He says, cast not away therefore your, your, your. Now, see the way faith is described here. It is called what? A confidence. It is called assurance. It is also called a confidence. And he said, this your confidence has great recompense of reward. That is, every time you demonstrate this confidence, there is a reward that will come. So he said, don't throw this confidence away. Don't throw this confidence away because this confidence has a great recompense of reward. So when you are defining faith, you have to look at two factors. Number one is assurance. Number two is confidence. Hallelujah. Now, I want to read 2 Kings chapter 18. We read just one verse and then we close. You see, in 2 Kings 18, the king of Assyria, which was the most powerful nation around that time, you know, has sent their army against Judah. They've conquered the northern kingdom of Israel, and now they've sent their army against Judah, you know, to destroy Judah. And this is like America trying to fight with Togo. How many of you know Togo? Amen? Or Kotonou? At least you know Kotonou. Anybody from Kotonou here? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, you have been to Kotonou before. So it's like America and Kotonou fighting. And then America sent all their army against Bini Republic. Amen? And then tells Bini Republic, surrender. And Bini Republic said, we won't surrender, we'll fight you. <laughs> Do you understand? So the king, Ezekiah, was the king at that time. King Ezekiah, praise the Lord. Now, Ezekiah was the king at that time. So, the king of Assyria couldn't just understand. Verse 19. Verse 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 19 together, everybody. One, two, go. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now unto Ezekiah. Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria. What confidence is this? Wherein thou trusted. Verse, nine, verse 20. Thou sayest, but they are vain, but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Now, the king of Assyria couldn't just understand. How can Bini Republic be threatening America? Amen. So he said, ah, what is this confidence? Where did you get this confidence from? One thing about faith is that when you begin to grow in faith, your confidence or your assurance begins to grow. And I'll be talking on that next week. We have to wrap it up now. Amen. Your what? Confidence. Your what? Assurance begins to go. Now listen to me. Because I have heard what he said from his word. Not an angel speaking now. How did Abraham get confidence or assurance? 
that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. Now, I have heard what was spoken, what he said, over and over again, and I have developed confidence or assurance in certain areas of my life. Are you getting me right now? I have developed what? Confidence or assurance in certain areas of my life. So there are areas of my life that I have so much confidence. And then you will be wondering, price of everything is going up. And Reverend is looking fresh. What is the secret? Is because I have built confidence over the years on supernatural provision. Are you getting me right now? Such that it doesn't matter what happens. Amen? My confidence is built. My assurance has been developed. I have so much confidence. I have so much assurance in that area of protection, of provision, of long life. Hallelujah. Of healing and health. You know, I went, I, every year I do general body check every year. You say, ah, but pastor, why are you doing that? You need to know what is going on so that if you are going to bind the devil, you know what the devil to bind. Amen? So, but when you are young, you don't need to do that. But when you reach my age, you need to do body check once a year. Once a year. Go, let them check everything. Once you reach 40 and above, let them check. And I got the result today. You will be amazed. The result I saw today is better than the one I had when I was 30-something. <laughs> Glory be to God. And I have a lot of my friends that are already having one issue or the other in their health. Me, I'm just jumping around. All I'm looking for is how to lose weight. Amen. I normally tell my children, I say, you better watch it. <laughs> Where you come from, nobody is slim. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the only thing I'm doing. So when you see me jogging, it's also that at least I can look like an under 17. Amen. Amen. I'll be able to wear a face cap and say, yeah, we the teenagers. Hallelujah. Why is this so? Because over the years, I have built my confidence in that area. I have so much confidence in the area of health that I know that till Jesus comes, I will still be preaching. I will still be standing. I will still be running around. Amen. 20 years from now, the only difference between me and now, I mean, and how I will look in 20 years, I will have shrunk a little bit because I want to slim down small. That will be the only thing. Maybe it look like Pastor Shegu. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Pastor Shegu is catching up with me very soon. <laughs> His wife is shaking head. <laughs> Don't catch up with Reverend, no, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, where I'm going is this. Because I have immersed myself into the word, hearing what God said, hearing what God said, concerning my life, my health, my family, my finances. Over the years, my confidence has grown. Such that, you know, when I have talked to some of us here, you know about certain things, and I say, okay, don't worry, um, see me tomorrow. Uh, don't worry, let's talk on Sunday. Uh, don't worry. This is, it's not that there is anything, no. I have developed confidence to a level that God will always make a way. Are you still here with me? So when you now come and you say, and then I tell you, okay, don't worry, God has done this one, that one. Now you say, ah, Reverend, ah, Reverend has connection. No. I was talking to Pastor Shegun and my wife. You know, there is somebody that needed to do some things around in Lagos. And I said, okay, don't worry, I will talk to somebody. At that time that I said I will talk to somebody, I don't know anybody to talk to. Nobody came to my mind. And then during the week, it just occurred to me to call somebody. This is somebody that we are not really in talking terms for many years. You know, we've known each other, but we are not really. 
And I just sent a message to her. I said, ah, Reverend, hope everything is okay. I said, yes, yes. I said, this, 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 this. He said, no problem. Tell the person to come. Tell the person to come. So by the time I called the person and said, well, you know, take this number, call this person, it would just feel, ah, Reverend is a superman. He knows everybody. He's not so, he's by what? By confidence. My confidence has been built over the years. Over the years. Hallelujah. And that is the reason why, as I conclude, as a Christian, position yourself to hear that which was spoken over and over. Position yourself to hear the word because that is how your confidence grows. That is how assurance comes. There is no situation that God cannot see you through if you will learn to release faith in that situation. Hallelujah. The three Hebrew children were thrown into fire, but by their faith in God, they came out. Why? Because their confidence have grown that God is able to deliver them by what was spoken. And that is why don't miss teaching services. Don't miss streams of healing. Don't miss any opportunity to hear the word. Are you getting me? Because that is how your faith grows. That is how confidence comes. You see why some of you are afraid of where your next house rent and school fees will come from. You know why some of you are afraid? It's because confidence has not come. You don't have confidence. And that's why some of you are afraid of where the next money, the next meal, the next rent will come from. But when your confidence is built to a level, you, don't, you are not afraid of those things. So what is faith? Faith is what? Assurance. Faith is what? Confidence. How does the assurance and confidence come? Because you have had that which was spoken. You have had that which was spoken. Just like the mechanic had how car works, such that he is confident. The same way, when you hear the word of God, confidence builds up in you on how the supernatural works. And because the supernatural is greater than the natural, the supernatural cannot be stopped, then you cannot be stopped. Glory be to God. Have you been blessed tonight? If you have been blessed, shout hallelujah. Amen. Let's bow down our heads to pray. I want you to talk to God tonight and ask him and say, Father, thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that you bless me via your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for your blessing. I ask for your grace. As I go into this week, Lord, help me to commit myself to hearing the word, to hearing that which was spoken. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are clapping for the Lord, you can do better. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Let's thank our papa once again and say thank you, sir, daddy. God bless you. If there is something you need to do is to have faith in God. But um, Papa said something. But, you know, before I give the announcement, it was like he was talking to me. This is a testimony that happened to me. And he said something. He said, you need to be in the atmosphere of faith to grow your faith. You know, there was a little project I wanted to embark on. And I was thinking on how to go about it. It's, it's a concern about my family. And uh, I think Papa was out of the country then. I, I was sharing with Pastor Shego yesterday. And he called me around 3 a.m. or so. Papa called me around 3 a.m. While, while we were discussing, and I was like putting confidence in somebody and telling him about what that person would do. And uh, all of the sudden, he just said, Mr. Isaiah, stop all these things that you are doing. 
you can do this thing by yourself. And right from that moment, my faith began to grow. I was not having a dime in my pocket. I had to wake my wife up and put the phone in speaker while Papa was speaking to me. And he was talking that if you continue to sit down and look at this thing, it will, it will not change anything. It's concerning somebody that is very, very close to me. Let me just say my daughter. Concerning my daughter. So he was telling me. And while he was speaking, he said, you need to be in the atmosphere. The atmosphere of faith. And GICC is the atmosphere of faith for some of us. Hallelujah. So do not miss any of our program. Sunday is another time to come into the presence of God to hear the word of God. And at the same time, it is our communion service. Are you excited? So do not miss it for any reason. Invite people. GICC is the atmosphere for faith. For the, so many people I discussed it with, they, they were thinking that it is not possible. How can you make I wasn't having a dime, but because of the faith, he inspired me. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir, for that testimony. Let's rise to our feet. We have come to the end of the service. Let's rise to our feet once again and begin to bless the name of the Lord for what he has done tonight, for his word that we have heard. Let's pray that the Lord will keep us where the word of God will be spoken to us to build up our faith, the atmosphere, the atmosphere of faith. That the Lord will keep our feet in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Till I see you tomorrow, 5.30 a.m., keep flowing in his blessing. Remember, streams of healing is still the atmosphere of faith. Hallelujah, and it's 5.30.